Alright guys, what's up? I'm back with another mask, and just to let you guys know, this mask gave me the worst of times, so take it easy on me. I was also trying out a lot of new uh, video work on this one, and about halfway through, I just kind of gave up because this mask was giving me such a hard time. So, just take it easy on me, but the end result is well worth it. So, without further ado, let's get into it. Now, as usual, we're going to cut the branding and take the straps off. Now after taking the straps off, you're going to want to hit this with some 220 grit sandpaper and go ahead and sand it down till it's all a one matte straight white color. Now after the sanding process I went ahead and got the easier details down with a pencil and then I went back over the pencil and uh, put everything down in marker and kind of got this nice looking cool brick looking uh, design. Now after I got the brick design down I went ahead and decided to move on to forming the mask. So for this particular mask I didn't want too much form. So I just kind of held it over the stove, um, as high as the stove could go really, and set and formed it for about 10-15 minutes until I got the shape I liked. And you can really see the shape take place here in a second. Now here is another mask just to show you how much form this mask really took. Like as you can tell this one kind of looks more like a frisbee and this one has more of a rock to it. After getting the form down I decided to go ahead and take the X-Acto knife and carve in each and every single line on this mask. I even added a few cracks. I don't know if you can see them on camera but they are there. Now I don't recommend doing this with an X-Acto knife. This absolutely killed my hands. I have blisters and cuts and bruises all over my hand from this mask. If you have a Dremel, I would strongly recommend using a, a Dremel. Now after that I decided I kind of wanted to add a texture in some places so I taped off certain parts of the mask where I wanted there to be a texture to be and left the back blank. I then took uh, some textured paint I had from a previous mask and went over it just as best I could and this actually took a day and a half to dry. So just be patient with it. Alright guys, so right here is about when this mask is just completely defeating me. I forgot to record a few parts and my camera work is a little crummy at this point. So uh, my bad for that, I'll make sure to fix that in the future videos. So after I got the texture paint down, I decided to paint the whole thing uh, black and then went back over the front 
with a dark red maroon color and then I uh, added some browns and some oranges in there just to kind of give it some more uh, variance of brick in there and then after that I painted on each and every crack and you know added more cracks along the surface and painted in that hole up top just so the bricks looked different and felt real more realistic I then handed the mask off to a local graffiti artist and let him do some graffiti on it so after I got the mask back from the graffiti artist I decided that I wanted to paint on the decals rather than do the regular electrical tape thing that I usually do so I used some uh, paper cutouts uh, these are, have sticky backs to them so uh, I just stuck these on and used these as kind of guidelines so I could put masking tape around them and uh, paint the uh, decals on individually. Alright, so like I said, after I had the temporary decals outlined and masking tape, I went ahead and took these temporary guys off. And all I did after that was just paint them in with a uh, cool yellow color that I liked. And then kind of dirtied it up with uh, some of the brick color that I used. Just to kind of make it feel more realistic and more natural like it's almost weathered. So after I had the decals painted on this time, I decided to add stickers right there at the bottom to kind of look like wheat paste posters, if you know anything about graffiti. And then I also added a uh, decal at the top or a sticker at the top to also look like another wheat paste poster. And then after this was one of, the, one of my favorite parts. I, uh, I took a rubber straw I cut it into two small pieces. I painted the outside of it white and the inside of it black. And I took some hot glue and kind of ran it down and strang it out a few times so that it looked like um, water. But I didn't like how the clear looked. So uh, I painted it blue so it looked more like water. I know it kind of looks cartoony, but I think it gets the point across a little bit better. So. Basically what this is, is two drain pipes. So after that was done, all that was left to do was to individually stitch on each of the elastic bands. And I just went with a black thread on this one, nothing too special. But uh, yeah, this is the final product guys, take a look. So all in all, I think this mask turned out really good. This is probably one of my favorite masks that I've done so far. Uh, just the small details kind of push this mask forward, I think. Uh, with the graffiti and actually carving in each and individual brick and adding in the cracks and even making everything look like runny paint, I think just really drove forward the motive of what I wanted the mask to look like. So there it is, the graffiti wall mask.